Hello everyone, welcome to the first tutorial of the Art Impressions Watercolor Journal, the Valentine's version. Uh, this is a really fun one. I'm looking forward to giving you all the instructions to create this fun little project. Um, but let me tell you what you're gonna need. So in this first tutorial, we're going to be doing these two pages. So we're gonna do the cover and then inside the first page on the inside. So these watercolor uh, projects we're going to be doing. And then when we get to the assembly following the watercolor, uh, I will go into more detail about the dies and how we assemble everything into the journal. So um, to start off, we're just going to be doing the watercolor projects and I'm going to show you what you're going to need for that. So first of all, we're going to need watercolor set 4052. That is our basic little flower set. Um, the foliage set four, we're gonna be using that. These little vines right here, and I should tell you, in this set, we're gonna be using this little daisy bunch. And then in the foliage set four, uh, either of these two, you can use whichever one is more comfortable for you. Um, <clears throat> we'll also be using flower uh, set six, so one of these two, and you can use either one of those. One leans to the right, one leans to the left, so whichever is more comfortable for you. And then uh, in the watercolor set five, the foliage set five, we're going to be using these little hanging vines. And again, either right or left um, is gonna be fine. Uh, let me tell you what uh, marker colors we're gonna be using. So the, uh, the brown 947, the pink 743, uh, the blue, dark blue 565, 969, uh, the red 885, that bright red, and then the cool green, the 249 cool green. And uh, we will be using uh, uh, our number four brush and our bleed proof white paint. So this one. So if you have a number one and a number four brush, you are good to go. Uh, those are the recommended ones to do these journals. So uh, let's get going and let's get these watercolor projects done. So we're gonna start out with the cover of the journal. This is the very first tutorial and we're gonna start out with that. So you can see that on my watercolor paper, I've created a guide here and I used two things. So I used this little um, circle from the double stitched uh, circle set. And let me tell you uh, exactly how big that is. Uh, and I used the inside of it. So <clears throat> it is about two and a half inches. So you want about a, you want a circle that's about two and a half inches wide. So, and then inside the circle, I used one of the, um, the little heart nested dies. And uh, this one fits right into the circle. So this is just a guide for us. We don't wanna go past the circle really. Uh, we can go a little bit past it, but it's, it's, it's okay if we do a little bit, but we kinda wanna stay inside the circle. And then we wanna do the shape of the heart. So that's why the heart inside the circle. So it's just a really simple little guide for us. And you could also do a just a round wreath too, which would also be really cute, especially since we're using that um, those reds and pinks for Valentine's. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start out with the, um, the floral, and this is the little daisy bunch. This one is such a great little stamp, and we're gonna start out with the light color. So this is the 743, this is the pink, and I'm just going to um, just start stamping it uh, into here. Now you want to, with this one, you always want to go around in a circle. So you don't want to, um, you don't want to just stamp it one time like that. You want to just get it, you know, a few times in here and just kind of wherever. I don't need to use the whole stamp. Sometimes I'll just use a couple of these little florals. Um, that's the great thing about using a marker is that we can just kind of ink the areas that we want. And if I see a little area that's just a little uh, light, I can go back over it again just by inking a couple of these. So now we're going to come in. We're not even going to clean this stamp off. We're going to come in with the red. And I'm going to use this bright red. This is the number 885. It's a really, really bright, uh, almost a pinky red. And it's just, it's just perfect for these projects. So <clears throat> I'm going to just ink some of these little florals again and just kind of stamp right over the top. Not over the, not completely over the top, but just kind of right next to it so I can kind of blend the colors a little bit. And I'm just still kind of going in that circular motion so that I get that, um, that combination of color and that dark to light. All right, so let's just actually, let's just do a little bit more 
uh, right here. I'm just gonna ink just a couple more and just get one more here over on the side. Okay, so now uh, let's add some water to that. And I've got my water over here and I'm just gonna dip my brush. I'm using my number four brush. Just gonna dip my brush in water and just pinch it off. And I'm gonna start with the light. And don't worry about um, stamping over the pencil. The pencil will erase after we're finished with the project. And most of the time, by the time you're done, uh, you won't even see the pencil marks anymore. So <clears throat> don't worry about that. It's going to be fine to just add water right over the tops of that pencil. All right, so I'm just, you can see, I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit uh, onto this pink. It's such a pretty pink. I just love it. Um, it's also um, got a little cool tone to it, uh, which works great with the red. So now we can go into the red and we can kind of blend these two together. It's okay if they overlap. Um, I think that changes up the color a little bit and gives us a little more of a variant of color. And again, I'm just tapping uh, on these little blooms. <clears throat> you don't want to, you don't want to do a brush stroke and you want to be sure to leave a little um, white space. So just a little white space like this. And I've left some room in between for my foliage. I didn't color the whole thing. And you can always come back and add a little bit more if you want to. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and do our foliage now. We're gonna use this little tiny vine here and I don't need the whole thing. So I'm just gonna use about half of it and I'm gonna use my cool green. So this is the number 249, cool green. And I'm just gonna ink about half of this little vine. And I'm just going to kind of stamp it in here like this and just kind of work, work my way around uh, my little wreath. Get this in position here. And just, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, turn your, your canvas so that you can get a better impression. And I'm gonna just, you know, put a couple down here so I can really make this heart shape. And then I'll just keep working my way around this way. And this is another one, you know, if you notice there's an empty spot, you can always go back later and um, add something more into there. And I think I'm just gonna come down this way with this one so that these little ends uh, kind of meet at the bottom. Now I can see that I've got, you know, a few little spots here that I need to kind of fill in a little bit. So I'm just gonna ink this and just add a little more in here. Maybe another one right here and right here. Okay, it's starting to take shape now. Maybe just one more right there. Okay, so now we can add water to our green, our green areas, this little foliage. And again, we're just going to be dabbing. We're just gonna dab at all of this. And just kind of blend it into the red and the pink. Um, that's okay to do that. It kind of gives us more of that, um, you know, watercolor look. And again, you want to leave those white spaces. Leave some white spaces because we don't want to just totally erase, you know, the little, um, the little leaves. We want to kind of blend them out so that they're more soft looking, but we don't want to lose the shape of the stamp either. And I can drag some of this color now to the inside. Just, just pull out some of this color. It's gonna give a really nice soft effect, a little more of a background. And I just love how this soft look um, works with these wreaths. They're just, they're so cute. And you can see it's starting to take shape now. <clears throat> okay, let's add some detail in here. And I'm just gonna do a really simple one with my, um, this is my red that I used before, the 885, and I'm just gonna use the bullet tip. So, you know, there are two tips to these markers. One is the brush tip that we use to ink our stamp. And the other end is the bullet tip. And it's just a, a finer uh, point like this. And we can use it to do details. So I'm just gonna make some little round circles in here and just add some little red 
flowers, just tiny little ones, just kind of wherever. And, you know, group them into little uh, groups of about three, maybe sometimes four. Um, and I think that makes it look more natural. So cute. You could add a few little dots um, to the blooms as well. Just little dots like this. And that is about finished. We are about finished with that. If you want to, you can put in uh, some accent uh, vines that are a little uh, more defined. So you don't add any water to these. You're just going to put them in. And it just kind of depends on, you know, the look that you want, what you're more drawn to. But they can work uh, more as an accent. Once you've kind of blended out uh, the color, you can put them back in um, as a little more of an accent. I think that's so cute. Okay, and that is it. Now let's go ahead and erase our pencil lines. We can just do that with uh, our pencil or an eraser, an eraser that you have. And you and once this is dry, you can just erase right over the top of your watercolor. And now you can see too, if there's anything that you want to um, add, you know, next to your little vines or your florals. And there we go, we've got our cover finished. And we'll be assembling it after we finish all of our watercolor projects. Okay, let's set this one aside. And let's go on to the next one. And that is the little bookmark that fits inside the pocket. This is a really simple one. It only takes one stamp. And uh, we're just going to ink the bloom and we're going to ink the stem uh, with the green. So this is the 249 and this is that 885 again. And I just cut it out with a little circle die. And let me tell you uh, what size that is. So it's about a one inch. A little one inch circle will just do the trick. And we're going to just ink that now with the red, the blooms. So the little bud right here and the bloom. And then we're just going to ink part of the stem. We don't need this whole stem. Um, it's not gonna fit on that little uh, circle. <clears throat> so we only need to just stamp this one time, just like that. And then we can add just a few little uh, vines in here, just to kind of fill it out a little bit. And then we'll take our brush again and just dip it in water and pinch it off and just get some of this color to bleed out. And then the same with the little stem and the little um, leaves. And that is it for that. That was so quick, wasn't it? That was the quickest and easiest one. Uh, you can go back in too <clears throat> and add a little darker color in here, especially into the center. And that will see how that just brightens everything up. So cute. And that one is finished. So we've got two down. Uh, let's go on to our third project, <clears throat> and that is this little rocker. And we're going to um, use those same colors with this one. So I went ahead and stamped it on my watercolor paper, and I used two colors. So I inked it first in the 565, and then right over the top, the 969. So two colors on that stamp, and then stamp it off twice. You wanna stamp this off twice. We're gonna make it really, really light, and uh, we're gonna keep that rocker uh, white so we don't we don't want to have too much color in the lines so the first thing we're going to do is um, our step one and that is to pull the color out of the lines and this is always the first step we're just kind of dragging that color out so you're you're pulling that color from the side of the lines so you're not you're not actually coloring on top of the lines you're just kind of dragging this color out because the, the point is that we don't want to make the lines any thicker. <clears throat> we just want that color to come out. So we don't want to, we don't want to 
uh, make these lines really heavy. And when you're coloring right on top of the lines, um, you can create that really, really dark outline. So we just want that color to kind of bleed out. And we can do this little guy up here too, just pull a little color out of him. And we are ready to uh, go on to the next step. You see how that already is starting to look three-dimensional just by doing that one step. So I'm gonna add some blue now to my palette. And this is that dark blue, the 565. And this is what we do, what we create the shadows with. So we're gonna leave this little chair white, but we still need to have some shadows uh, showing those darker areas um, to make it look three-dimensional. Uh, we're gonna use some red and we're going to, um, I'm just gonna clean off my, my little Daisy Bunch stamp and we're going to ink in some little florals just like we did on the wreath. So I'm gonna start out with the pink and I'm just going to stamp those in on the side, um, just on both sides of this little basket. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more out here. You can see I'm just stamping that over and over again. And we're gonna do the same thing now with the red that we did before. And we're just going to ink that red right in the center. And I'm gonna make that just a little darker make it that really red inside here and then more red out here in this little bucket okay so now we're going to add some water to that just like we did before start with the light color and just kind of blend so we're doing the exact same thing it's just that we're putting these florals in pots instead of in a wreath Now we're gonna just add some water to this red. See how vibrant that red is? Just so cute. Right over the top of the, right over the edge of the pots. This is why we stamp it off too, is because we don't wanna fight with a lot of dark lines here. So we make that really light and most of the time they just blend out and you can't even see them. All right, so let's add some color now to the pots. Um, this one up here, we're gonna add a little green to <clears throat> make it really light. This is a 249, that cool green. And we're just gonna add a little bit of this um, to that container. Just make it really, really light. It's almost a, a really pretty minty green. And I'm adding that color where it's going to be the darkest. So that would be on the sides because we want this to look round. And in order for it to look round, it has to have a highlight in the center. And then let's do just a little detail on here. Let's just add a little stripe and maybe just one more. Don't worry if they're not perfect, it's okay. All right, that looks good. So let's go on to the next one and let's leave this one white. So we're just going to add a little blue so we can get a shadow. So we don't, you know, we're not adding any color to it like we did with the green. Uh, we're just going to leave it white, but nothing ever stays uncolored. It's got to have a little shadow. Otherwise, we it looks flat. And this one, let's do a red stripe. So here's that same red. This is the 885, that same red. And let's do a little red stripe on this one. Just like that. So cute, and we are ready now to add some foliage to these. Uh, let's do that with the same green. We're gonna use that same foliage, so that, um, that little vine that we used before. And we're just gonna ink this up. And we're gonna kinda grow it out of our little basket here. So it looks like it's kind of coming up over um, the top of this little rocker. And then we can, we can drop some down in here too. And we can put a few in here also. Maybe we'll just put a couple in here, like so. So let's just add a little water to this. Just a little bit. And again, it doesn't matter that that green kind of bleeds into the red and the pink, not at all. And 
and we can just kind of pull this color out again too. We can drag it kind of out to the outside. Okay, that looks good. So let's hang down a little vine. Um, <clears throat> let's hang a little vine down from the side of this, this little container. And we're gonna use this one. And you can see that that's, that's pretty long to fit inside this container, so I'm just gonna ink it to about here, just about here. And then I'm just gonna stamp it right into uh, my container, just like that. And then with this one, I just need to kind of hit these little leaves. I don't need to, to um, add water to the whole thing. I wanna leave the vines, you know, pretty thin so that they don't, um, we don't, if we add too much water to them, they get too thick. And we just, we don't want that. I wanna kind of leave them. All right, let's add a little sky now into the background. And we can do that with the blue. And so we're just going to put a little blue back here into the background. Just a little tiny bit. Keep it light. And let's go on now to the little bird. And we're gonna use a, a warm brown, this is the 947. And we're just gonna add a little bit of this color um, to this little bird up here. I'm just gonna make him a little robin. So it's got a little red chest. And just really, really lightly. And then his little red chest, we can do with the red. And he just kind of fits right into this, this little scene. Just kind of blend that together. Now we're we've kind of lost his eye and his beak, so we're going to use a twin tone, a really um, a fine tip twin tone. This is the dark brown, and I'm just going to put in, put his little eye back in and his little beak. So just like that, and see how that just adds um, so much uh, character back to him. And you can add you can add a little bit to his little feet too. So he's sitting on that little chair. All right, so let's go on to the little the little rocker. And the only thing left really to do is to add some shadows to it because it's also white. And so we just wanna show where the dark areas would be. And one of them would be right under here because this little part of the chair comes forward. And so that's gonna create a little shadow. Um, there'll be a little shadow here where this little bird is. And then here where the pot is, we can put a little shadow out here. Back in here, this leg, that will be in the shadow and this side of the chair here. So we don't have to do too much. And then, you know, in between these, these little slats here, we can add some blue in there too. So cute. We can put a little shadow here where the vines are on the pot. We can do that. And then under here, this would be just a little dark area right here where that leg connects, connects to that, um, to that chair. Same under here where the little handles are. And that's really, that's really it. You don't have to do a ton. That just turned out so cute. It's gonna be so cute in our journal. And one more little thing with these um, little rocker feet, in order to show that these are coming up, we just need to put a little blue line just under them. And see how that kind of raises that little rocker foot right there? Just kind of raises it up off the ground. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my little twin tone now and I'm gonna just darken in um, these areas of the chair where it looks like the boards are kind of kind of pulling apart a little bit. And just give it a little more of that rustic feel. 
And then up in here, we can do that too. And this little guy, we can just add a few little details to him. And we are finished with our little project. This is page one. I'm just gonna put a few little dots in here. Just like that. And uh, be sure to sign, be sure to sign all of your art uh, that you put in your journal. Every single page needs to have your, your signature on it. And I forgot the white paint. So, you know, the project isn't finished until we add the white paint, especially when it comes to our little florals. So here's what we're using. We're using the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, and we're gonna add some white onto the little um, florals here. Now, I did add um, a little detail to the chair, the little heart back here, and a couple more long stems. That's totally up to you if you wanna add those details. But the white, we're just gonna take it from the container and I'm just gonna use my little, my number one brush and we're just gonna dab it on here and make some little white blooms just like this uh, into our little pot. And we can add some up here into the greenery too. But it just kind of brightens up everything when we add, um, add this white paint. Just looks like some little white blossoms and it just it just like I said just kind of brightens everything up okay we are found we are now finished with the watercolor part of this and let's go ahead and add the white paint now to to the wreath that we also finished because um, I forgot to add it to this too. So I'm just gonna kind of add it into the little blooms here like this. And just, you know, I just dip it right out of the jar. Just dip it out of the jar and just add some little dots here just like this. You can add as much of this as you want to. It's just so cute. Okay, now this project is finished and page one is finished. And uh, the next step will be to uh, put it all together in our journal. Okay, everyone, we're now ready to start assembling our journal. And the first step, of course, is to create the journal cover. And that is using this set here. So let me just show you uh, what this set is. If you're new to this, uh, this is number 5543. This is the basic journal set. So this creates the cover. Uh, it has dies that cut out all the pages and lots of decorative um, uh, borders that you can use in your journal. So the way that we start out is we wanna cut two of the cover dies. So this is the big die that's in the set and we wanna cut two of these. One side has a rounded edge and one side has the sharp edge. So let's just assemble this part and then we'll go from there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to align the two. Let me just move this up just a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna align these two together and we're gonna glue these two back sides. So the, the, two, the two pages that have the sharp edge, we're gonna glue those together. So I'm just gonna add some glue now to my journal. Whoops, that got, oh, that came out a little fast. And I'm just gonna go kind of right along the edge here just like that. And then I'm gonna line this one up right along the crease. So just right along the crease of this one. I wanna make sure that it's right along the crease and that the sides are all lined up perfectly. There we go. And that is the cover of the journal. So that's how every journal is going to, uh, is going to begin. This is the cover and then your pages will be glued into the binding right here along the sides. So we're gonna to get to that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, complete our cover. And we finished we finished our, um, our little watercolor wreath that's gonna be going on the cover. And I just picked a different cover this time. I know that the original journal, let me just show you the original journal. This is what the original one looked like. And I thought I would try something new just to give you another idea of a different type of cover. So, you know, you can use anything, even red heavier weight cardstock would be so cute for a Valentine's journal or just white. You could use white also. 
Now the die that I'm using on the cover is a new one, and let me show you what set that is from. It's from this one, this is 5723. This is the journal cover and bookmark die set. And the great thing about this, it's it's really for layering. So when you're creating those pages inside and you wanna do these decorative edges, these are great for that, including the cover. Now this cuts out this piece right here, and let me just show you uh, what that looks like. It's this one, it has a decorative edge all around. So it fits perfectly onto the cover of your journal. Now that's this one right here, but there's also this one that has this decorative edge. And the larger pieces are for the cover, and the ones inside are for the pages on the inside of your journal. So you'll be able to layer and create all sorts of really fun combinations uh, inside your journal. For this one, like this one, for example, you could put those two together and have a really neat um, kind of building edge that you can uh, layer on top of on top of each other. So I, I'm really excited about these dies. I think they're gonna be great. And then also you get these really cute um, little bookmarks, which we're gonna be using uh, in our journal. So let's, um, let's start out just by gluing this in and then we'll just kind of go from there. And I'll kind of tell you what I'm using for uh, when I get to each part. So let's glue this one in. And by the way, the paper is all from our Valentine's paper pack. Um, that is available. And there are some great, uh, just some really neat um, prints in there. The, the patterns are small, so they're just perfect for a journal. Uh, let me just show you really quick. Here it is, this is the paper pack. Uh, it's number 57441. Here, it, here is the front side of those pages and then the back also. So it's two each of each page and there are 24 designs. So, so many really fun, things that go together. I love this palette. I love this mint green. I love this bright red. And all of these patterns are gonna be great in your journal. We're gonna be using a lot of them. So exclusively those, um, uh, those papers for the inside of your journal. So now that we've got this on, um, I just cut out a circle and I just used the, um, the double stitch dies. So from the double stitch die set, uh, the circle. And it just looks like this. And it cuts the little stitch on the inside which is just a little decorative. And so I'm gonna glue this one. And also this would be cute too, wouldn't it? You could just put that one on there. Uh, they're just, there's a lot of really neat um, designs on here. And um, I love that the back also is really pretty. So you can choose whichever one you wanna use. Now I'm just gonna put this right in the center. I don't wanna cover up too much of my decorative edge here, uh, but I'm gonna put this right in here like that. And then I'm gonna glue my wreath that we just finished um, in the inside of my circle. And by the way, I'm using um, art glitter glue. You can tell this is well-worn. I love this glue because it dries right away. I mean, just, you know, just instantly and holds like crazy. So uh, this is my go-to. All right, so I've got my little wreath now glued to the inside and my cover is starting to shape up here. So cute. And you could add, you know, a sentiment, you could add um, something special in here, you know, to a special friend. On my original one, I put a little banner here and wrote to a special friend. So you can do that. Um, there is a whole sentiment set about friendship and love that you can um, choose from. So there are lots of things you can pick from to go into this journal and to go on the cover. So let's add the clasps now. And this is, um, there, are two, there are two pieces that go to each clasp. And here's what they look like. And the die cuts them out. And here's the die set. So let me show you this. Uh, this is 5556, the journal clasp die set. And this will close your journal and keep it shut. So um, the way that this works is the first thing that you want to do is you wanna glue um, the first part of the clasp onto your journal. And it's gonna just be flush with the edge of the journal. So just like this. And you can just, you can glue one uh, down on the bottom and one on the top. And you wanna glue it just right here in the middle. So nowhere else, just right there in the middle. That's where it's gonna be. And then you want to just glue it so that it's flush with the edge of the journal. See that little edge right there? You want that to be just straight along the edge of the journal. And let's do the other one. And I'm gonna add my glue right here to the middle. 
and do the same thing. Kind of space these out. Now, if you want to be exact, you can measure and um, make them exact, but I usually just eyeball it. And it's close enough for me. Okay, that looks good. Um, and now we're gonna do the other the other piece. And the way that this works is that you want to um, you want to slip this through the little latch here so that it looks like that. Close your journal and make sure it's straight. So like this, hold that down, and then add a little glue just to the center of this tab. So it's a little awkward to just show you here, but you just wanna add a little glue to that. Make sure this is straight. Just make sure that that is straight, and then glue that down to the back, okay? Just like that. And we're gonna do the other one too, same way. So no glue to the center right here. No glue on this center part at all. So let's do this one. And we're gonna hook the little latch here, just right in here. That's why you don't put glue on this because you have to be able to slide that latch into the clasp. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hold this down. And then we're gonna add some glue to the center um, of this little latch. Just right here. It doesn't take very much, especially if you're using this glue. This just works so great. The biggest thing is you just wanna make sure that it's straight. That's, that's the biggest thing. Make sure that it's straight when it comes down. Just like that. And now we've got our little journal clasps on. And as soon as that's dry, we can go to the next page. So let me just open this up. I'm sure it is dry already. And now these are kind of free, uh, free to open the journal. You know, they just kind of hang down like this. Uh, that's the way that they're meant to be, and um, then they're easy to close. All right, so let's open up our journal, and let's start with the cover, the inside cover. And um, <clears throat> we're going to put down our little decorative piece. Now, this is also a die from, uh, from inside the original die set, and there are two different ones of these. One cuts a little scallop edge, and one cuts a straight edge. So you can use them, you know, whichever one you want to use, but they fit perfectly on the pages that go into the journal. So I cut this one out and I'm just going to place it um, on the cover just like this. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'm going to glue it down. Just add my glue to it. I'm gonna kind of space it where it would be onto the page. So the, the cover is gonna be a little bit bigger than the page, but I want it to kind of align to the page that's gonna be glued into my journal. So I'm gluing it kind of, you know, even um, from the top to the side to the score line and across the back. And then this is gonna be a little bit wider here. And then I'm gonna glue my decorative piece. Now this is part of that, um, that new set so this one here, now you can see it's a little bit smaller. This is the large piece that we used on the front. This is the small one that's included in the set that goes into your journal. And see how perfectly that just fits in here? Uh, sometimes when you're cutting these smaller pieces, especially if you wanna layer something, um, it's a little tricky to get them straight. So that's why we came out with this die set because it's just, it's so cute and it just works great. So I'm gonna make this a pocket and I'm just gonna glue the edges. Look how cute this is. Like you could absolutely use the fronts and backs of all of these papers. It's, it's really kind of hard to decide um, which one to use because they're all just so cute. All right, I'm gonna just center this along the edge uh, just like that. And I didn't glue the center so that I can use it as a pocket. And then I'm gonna add my little bookmark. And here's my bookmark. And this is from uh, these sets. And by the way, these all come together. So it's one big set of all of these dies that come together that create the front and the, and the pages. So I'm using this little bookmark and it's just gonna tuck right in here, uh, just like that. I think that's so cute. And uh, we made a little decorative button like this. And it's just, we're just gonna put a little simple thing onto um, this bookmark. And this is also from the circle dies, the double stitch circle dies. So I'm just gonna glue this on now and just put this onto uh, my little bookmark. And then it can just tuck and live 
right inside this little pocket. And then I added, you know, I just added a little um, tassel to it and made it so cute. So now we're going to glue in our first page. And <clears throat> maybe I'll just take this out just for a second until we get the page group uh, glued in. So here's our, here's our image that we created for the first page. This was our little rocker that we just finished. And um, we're going to be adding that now uh, to the inside of our journal. This is our first page. So I'm gonna move, kind of move these things over to the side and get the um, page out. You can see the score line. This is from the original journal set. So it includes all of the, um, all of the pages. You can cut all of the pages with the page die. And let me show you what it looks like. This is it right here. So it cuts the page and then it scores the line so that it can be um, put into your journal. So the first thing you wanna do is just kind of um, bend that along that score line. So bend your page just like this and then fold along uh, that scored line. So you've got your page just like this. Now we're gonna bend it back again because it's really important that the lip of the page is facing forward, okay? So we want this to be put into the journal along the score line. See where the score line is? It's gonna glue in like this. We need to have it like this. So, so not like this, not like this, but like this. So we wanna see that little L shape uh, when we go to glue it in here. So I'm gonna add my glue now to the edge. And I would suggest, you know, you can use um, adhesives, all kinds of adhesives for the inside of your journal, but when you're doing the pages like this, I would really encourage you to use glue uh, because you're gonna be opening this so many times. I open my journals, you know, 100 times, and uh, you really want the pages to stay put. And I want to bring this all the way over to the edge to that score line. So I just kind of fold it up a little bit so I can see really clearly where that score line is. And then I just really push it down. That looks pretty good right there. That looks like it's even. And then I really press that down to make sure that that glues and holds. And really, um, like I said, this glue that I'm using is just great. I'll, let me just show it to you again. It's art glitter glue. And it is so great because it really does dry quickly and it holds like crazy. So I've never had anything, any of my pages come loose at all um, after using this glue. Okay, so now we've got our page glued in and we're gonna use our decorative paper again. So here's that same paper I used and I'm just going to um, place it in here. You see how that edge is the same here. That's why I glued it away from the edge of here of this edge. I didn't center it in the middle of the cover. I wanted it to kind of be the same on both sides and see how that just fits perfectly onto the page. So I'm gonna glue this down. But first, I want to uh, do a decorative piece like this. So maybe I'll just glue these together first. Maybe I'll glue these together first like this so that I can see that little decorative edge, or maybe I'll just put it on the top. You know what? I change my mind so many times when I'm doing these things, um, but I love that about it. I just absolutely love that about it. Okay, I'm gonna, um, because my little d design is gonna go in here like that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue this down. I'm gonna glue this to this first and just leave that little edge just like that. So I want to glue just so that a little bit of this is showing. And I want to see just a little bit of this decorative edge here. And I think that looks pretty good. You don't want to you don't want to glue over your score line because you do have to close the pages. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to glue this down. And you know, every time I open this journal, I find a new idea. I think of something new to do in it. And I, you know, I really ran out of pages. So there's only so many things I can add to it. But you know, when I recreated it to make this video, uh, it was just really fun to, you know, maybe just change up something a little bit like the cover and change out the pages a little bit with some different paper. And um, it's just been, it's just so fun. 
So look how cute this is. Now what I do is I, you know, if I don't have an exact die to cut this out, um, you could use, you could use this die and you could cut it out, you know, to get that decorative edge and then just trim off the back side. Or you could just use the single die like this, cut a square or a rectangle and then just trim off the edge. So here's what I mean by that. Just line it up along the straight edge. So if you were to cut a, a rectangle, cut this out in a rectangle, and then place this right along the edge, uh, it's pretty easy to get it straight. And then you can just trim that off, and then you've got both of your decorative edges on here. So we're gonna glue this one down now. And just kind of center it. I'm just gonna center it right in the middle of this really pretty paper. That looks pretty good. And now we can tuck this back in here. We've got this back here. And then I just added um, a little tag like this. You can put it at the top or the bottom. I'm just gonna glue it in and then you can decide uh, what you wanna say on it. There are so many different sentiments that will work just and be so cute on here. Um, I'll show you what I used in my original journal, but you know, this is your journal, so you can put whatever sentiment you want in it. Uh, here's what I used in this one. I used for a special friend. And then I just glued it down to the bottom, right down here. And I made a little, you know, a little thing like this onto my chair. So you can also do that. That would also be really cute to do. Just adding a fun little thing. You could add, um, you could add a little uh, balloon. Let me just grab one from another page. You can add a little balloon that could be up here too. Uh, just, or leave it, just leave it blank. Add another little bird. I mean, you know, I tend to want to fill in every little single corner of everything, but maybe you want your journal to be a little simpler. So there we go. We've got the cover done and we've got the first page done. So we are ready to move on to page two.